All right, welcome guys and gals to freaking laser designs and tutorials. I'm Jonathan Vinson, and today we're gonna take a look at making a wooden wind spinner. We'll start in Illustrator and we'll move to the Glowforge. Let's do it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is click File, New from Template, and pick our Glowforge template file. If you don't have a Glowforge template file, I'll link to one in the description below. I'll also put a link to a video that describes how to set up one's workspace for Glowforge in Illustrator. Uh, I have mine set up with Snap to Grid already on by default. Uh, it's important for this and personally I just like it. I kind of toggle on and off, on and off to make certain tasks easier. In any case, we'll want to go ahead and grab our rectangle tool and create a three inch rectangle. We're going to make a number of rectangles and they're all going to be in different lengths. We're going to do uh, rectangles at three inches, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, five and a half, and six. You can make uh, more rectangles at various lengths. You know, you can do six and a half, seven, seven and a half, eight, whatever you want to do. It really depends on how long you want to make your wind spinner and how big. But we're stopping at six. All right, so we've made that rectangle. It's outlined in red, meaning that the Glowforge is going to cut this out of uh, our piece of wood. And later on, we're going to be using a quarter inch poplar uh, that you can easily get at Home Depot. All right, so here we have our red rectangle. We now want to select our ellipse tool, click once on the artboard, type in five millimeter, and it's really already set up for it, but put in five millimeter in case yours isn't. Go ahead and bring this over uh, to roughly the center of the rectangle. Click both, and we want to align the centers, both horizontal and vertical. As you see, it, it basically takes it off the little snapped grid, so we'll want to put that back. So grab it, put it back on the grid, okay? And then one last thing I want to do is grab the line segment tool and throw down a line, give it a different color. I'm going to make this blue because this is going to be an etch. Basically, later on when we start assembling all this, we're going to be putting down these uh, wooden pieces, these wooden rectangles on a threaded rod and we're going to be shifting or rotating the rectangles this corner to the halfway point and having this little mark just makes it easier so you don't have to guess where the halfway mark is. All right, so at this point go to view and take off snap to grid, zoom in just a little bit more, hold shift down on the keyboard, grab this and bring it to about halfway. I really don't want this mark to show much at all just as a simple indicator and that's it zoom back out and this is what we have now at this point what we want to do is highlight the entire rectangle hit control C on your keyboard or command I guess it's command C on the on a Mac hit control F that should have duplicated it in place and use your arrow keys to bring everything over oops and I shouldn't have done that right yet I'm gonna go back and hit control Z I meant to turn snap to grid um, snap to grid on back on. So let's go ahead and do that. Go uh, view snap to grid. Okay, now we'll highlight everything. We'll copy it with Control C, Control F, as I had stated earlier, uh, and then bring it on over to uh, the next grid section. Just select your rectangle. Bring it over till it hits three and a half. Highlight the circle in the rectangle. Align centers. Bring it back into position. Grab this and bring it back into position. And now we've done our three and a half. And basically we're going to go ahead and do that for the rest of the rectangles up until six inches. So control C. Actually, let's highlight everything here. Highlight everything, control C, control F, bring it on over, and then grab the rectangle. We're going to be going uh, four inches this time. Highlight just the circle and the rectangle, align the centers, shift it over one, grab your etch mark. Bring 
it over. Again, highlight everything, control C, control F, shift it over. Now we're doing our four and a half. So we'll hit the rectangle here, bring it over to four and a half. Highlight just the circle and the rectangle, align, align, grab the edge, bring it on over, highlight everything, control C, click your space bar, shift over, control V, bring it uh, all into position. Again, snap to grid is on. So let's see, what were we on? That was four and a half. So now we're working on five. So we want to grab the rectangle here, bring it on over to five. I like the circle and the rectangle. Align, grab your edge, bring it over. Highlight everything, control C, control F, bring it on over. Grab just your rectangle. I'm going to bring it over to five and a half. Just the rectangle and the uh, circle. Align the centers. Shift it over. Grab your edge. And that should be our five and a half. And we have one more. Control C. Control F. Bring it on over. Grab just the rectangle. Bring it out to the six inch mark. Circle and rectangle, align centers, shift over. Grab your little edge, bring it over. And now we'll zoom out and see what we have. So we should have now a three inch rectangle, a three and a half inch rectangle, a four inch rectangle, four and a half, uh, five, which I didn't seem to shift over. 5 inch, a um, 5 and a half, and a 6 inch rectangle. Alright, so that basically does it. Again, we're going to be bringing this into the Glowforge. The Glowforge is going to be uh, cutting out these various rectangles. It will be putting a small little etch here. We will then grab these rectangles, slide them on to a rod eventually uh, that has a nut at the bottom, and be rotating them to the halfway mark this corner to the halfway mark on the one below it. Uh, it'll make more sense as we put it together. So let's go ahead and file, uh, save as. We'll go ahead and call this a uh, wind spinner. I'm gonna need to put it in the proper location. In this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it on my desktop. Uh, that's as an Illustrator file, uh, so we can go back and edit it easy. Uh, but we also want to save it for the purpose of the Glowforge. We want to save it as an SVG. And of course, we want to make sure all these are unchecked or we'll start having problems. Click OK. And that does it. So let's move on to the Glowforge. OK, so before we jump into our Glowforge settings, we need to gather our materials and get them prepped. For this project, I'm going to use two 1 quarter inch by 6 inch by 3 foot boards. I'll mask them, and then I'll take them over to my miter saw for cutting to the proper length. In the case of the Glowforge, around 20 inches. Alright, so once we have the material prepped and in our Glowforge, it's time to upload our file. In this case, I'll grab our wind spinner file and open it. And the Glowforge will, of course, process that and get it ready for us uh, to insert our settings. Uh, we'll want to go up to unknown, use an uncertified material, and put it in at a quarter inch, so 0.25 inches, submit. And then we'll want to go ahead and enter our settings. But uh, before we do that, what we want to do is grab the whole design and pull it out of the workspace. In this case, I'll need to zoom out a little bit. Move it out of the workspace. And what we're going to be doing is basically pulling each individual piece, for example, this three inch piece, and then we'll duplicate it eight times. And we'll be doing that for all the rest of the pieces. Okay, at this point, I need to pause the video to explain the mistake I'm about to make. If you remember, when we designed our pieces, we made little tick marks on the end that were to be etched and function as aligning marks. I'm about to enter cut settings, not etch settings. In the end, it's not a big deal since the cut, it doesn't transverse the whole piece, um, you know, so it's not gonna like fall apart. But it is a mistake. 
If you decide to make this wind spinner, be sure to increase the speed and lower the power significantly. You simply want to make a mark. That's it. Okay, let's take a look at the rest of our settings. Okay, so here's where I make the mistake. Now we'll want to go ahead and enter settings for the pieces we'll actually be cutting. We'll want a speed of 135, we'll want full power, and we'll want it at 0.25 inches in terms of the focus height. Save as a preset if you want. And we'll want to zoom out and take a look at our visual. Now in this case we're going to grab our 3 inch piece and we're going to duplicate it for a total of 8 pieces. So here I'm duplicating one at a time, then I'll grab the four pieces and duplicate all that at once, bring it over for a total of eight. I'll grab a three and a half inch piece, bring it up, duplicate it again for a total of eight pieces. Then we'll grab the four inch, bring it over, and do the same thing. Now in the case of the four inch though, there's obviously not enough room on the piece of wood for eight pieces, so we'll just do four here until we come back with a new piece of wood and we'll add an additional four. Now it's important not to lose track. Uh, a lot of these pieces start looking the same because again there's only a half inch difference you know, as you go up in increments and sometimes it gets confusing. I made a mistake uh, when I tried doing this in the, uh, you know, when I was experimenting before I did this tutorial uh, and, and it screwed me up big time. Okay, so we've already hit the print button. We'll let the Glowforge do its thing and now we see it's 11 minutes and 26 seconds. We'll hit the big Glowforge button and we're off. We'll speed it up. All right, and we're done. So once we're back in the app interface, we're going to grab our pieces that were already cut and bring them out of the workspace, grab the four four inch pieces and shift them to the top left corner, then grab our four and a half inch piece and begin to duplicate it. Again, we're gonna want eight total pieces of the four and a half inch, and then we're going to move along and do the same thing with the five, same thing with the five and a half, and the same thing with the six. Now I'm not going to belabor this by showing this over and over and over again, so we're going to speed everything up and just get done with it. So sit back for about 20 seconds as we go through it. Okay, we're back with our finished pieces. The first thing we're going to want to do is take off the masking tape. Now this is obviously a pretty laborious and boring thing to watch, so we'll go ahead and speed through this. Okay, what you see represented here is an M5 lifting eye nut, an M5 cap nut, M5 washer, and then a barrel swivel that you can find at the local fishing store and of course the M5 threaded rod. Now what we're going to want to do is get that cap nut and put it in this little jig that I made. Uh, whoops. Now the jig is nothing more than a, a piece of wood uh, with a hole burned into it and I'll press this in and actually what I'll end up doing is end up getting a hammer and, and, and popping it in. It didn't go in all that well. I had the hole a little too small. So once it's hammered in, we'll want to get our threaded rod along with the M5 washer and thread it into the cap nut like so and uh, tighten it up. Now I didn't do this here but Probably what I would do if I were doing it over again is get a little Loctite thread locker and put it in there just to make sure it doesn't come undone later on. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is get our three inch pieces and start stacking them on the threaded rod one at a time and we'll start with four. So basically we'll start with our four three inch pieces. We'll put one piece on. We're going to put a little dab of glue at the center of it and then we'll bring our second piece on top of it and bring it ever so slightly around to that little tiny tick mark in the center. I'll show you in just one moment here. So we're putting the glue on in the center. I actually put too much in that instance. You want it just a little bit. Bring the second piece down and rotate it just such that the corner of the second piece or the top piece touches the tick mark. Then we'll put a little dab of glue and in this case bring our third piece down on top so the uh, left corner touches again the center tick mark of the piece below it and put a little pressure on and then we'll put a little dab of glue 
and then put the fourth piece on top and rotate it so that the left top corner touches the middle tick mark of the piece below it. And again, put a little more pressure down below. And it all kind of sticks. And so this is the, the three inch pieces. Then we'll grab the three and a half inch pieces and put four of those on top. Then we'll do the same with the four, the four and a half, the five, etc. And then once you get to six, you use all eight pieces and then you work your way back down five and a half, five, four and a half, four, three and a half, three. So let's go ahead and speed the process up. All right, so once the last piece is on, we'll want to go ahead and get our M5 washer and put that on and then get our lifting eye nut and put that on. Now, if I were doing this again, as I said earlier, I would get some thread locker and put on there just to make sure it doesn't come undone. Uh, but regardless, you'll want to go ahead and put it on very tight. Now, when you do that, it's very possible as it tightens up, you'll get glue spill out. So if you get glue spill out, you'll want to have a rag nearby to wipe that away and to clean it up. After the lifting eye nut is on tight, we'll want to pull the spinner out and uh, take a look at it and then put the barrel swivel on, all right? The barrel swivel is what's going to allow the wind spinner to spin in the wind. So we'll go ahead and do that. Let me speed the process up a little bit here. Once you have the barrel spinner on, you should see that it spins pretty freely in either direction. All you need to do now is spray it with some clear coat, grab an eye hook and some high strength fishing line, and hang it up. At the end of the day, you'll have an eye-pleasing decorative piece that you can be proud of. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Take care.